On last week's Ask the Mead Maker, I made a very, very, very important announcement. On this week's Ask the Mead Maker, I promised to say absolutely nothing important at all. Welcome to Ask the Mead Maker, where I, Ricky the Mead Maker, answer your questions about mead making, mead drinking, mead brewing, and really, any question you're willing to send to me. We're going to start off with a reader this week, one that was so well written that I thought you'd want to hear it verbatim. The problem is I try to keep these episodes to about six minutes, so I'm going to have to abbreviate it. Waz Pac-Man says, I started my first ever batch of mead. Gives me a date. I unfortunately... I'm a bit too curious and opened up the cover of my fermenter, stuck my nose in there and took a big whiff. Let's just say I went, and I'm going, it's not a model poetic, but woo. Loud enough for my neighbors in the apartment building to ask if everything was okay because it packed a huge punch. So on, so on, so on, sour smells, so on, so on, concerns about acetyl aldehyde, acid aldehyde. Could I bring the batch in and ask your nose to give it a gander to see if I should just chuck it? I know that your ethos is not to chuck it and see where it goes, but I'm not sure if this is going to end up being a complete palate buster or a potentially passable first attempt. TLDR, would you do me the honor of smelling my batch? Baldy locks. Baldy locks? They don't equip the Jewish people with these just for show. I'd be happy to smell your batch. Our next question comes from someone who has a number in the middle of his name, so I don't know how to pronounce it. But the question is this, why did you only shoot one episode of Ask the Boss? And I have a theory about this. I have three theories, in fact. Number one is that I'm a mere minion under Kelly's thumb and must do what she says. Number two, I don't think she loves being on camera, but my real theory, and this is the one I put out a lot, is we get a lot of questions about nutrient loading and very, very few about excise tax and postage. Our next question is a very good one from someone with a very weird name. Pikmin God Olimar wants to know about scaling up batches of mead. If you have a one gallon batch, can you just triple everything, your honey, your water, your yeast, your nutrient, to make a three gallon batch? And the answer is, Generally speaking, yes. It's not like making rice or barley where you have to worry about your water ratio as you scale up and possibly lose, blah, 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 blah. There's one exception. At some point, you can have a batch of meat or beer or wine so big that the hydrostatic pressure of your must or your wort or your beer or your wine can crush the yeast. It's called autolysis. And it's awful. It makes these weird off flavors like rubber bands and rubber cement. But the good news is it usually doesn't happen until you're making about 12,000 gallons. So my guess is you're okay. Our next question comes from Thomas, who has aged a batch of mead for an entire year and is very concerned about getting bottle bombs if he bottles it up and doesn't refrigerate it. The good news is unless you add more sugar, there is almost no way that a one-year-old batch would start re-fermenting in the bottle and cause issues. Our last question this week comes from Tony, who asked this question months and months ago, but now is the right time to answer it. He's asking about acerglins, meads made with maple, and he wants to know if I've ever made an acerglin or an acerglin sizer or an acerglin bochet or any of these weird combinations of different types of meads and what my ratios were. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send you to my article about blending and figuring out ratios of different ingredients. It's linked in the doobly-doo below. But the big reason this is the perfect time of year for this is Fire on Snow came out two weeks ago, which is technically an acerglin. It's a maple mead. And my ratio of honey to maple is about 9 to 1, 10 to 1, 20 to 1. Very little maple. And the reason is, you have too much maple in something like that, and all that sugar gets fermented out, you probably never thought to yourself, huh, what does maple syrup without any sugar in it taste like? The answer is, for those of you at home who haven't done this, 
the inside of a tree, because that's what maple is. So if you have too much maple and you ferment it all the way down to zero residual sugar, well, it's a very expensive way to replicate oak aging. So that's our last question this week. I just have to send it over to Ricky with our word of the week. Ricky? Thank you, Ricky. Congratulations on your news, by the way. This week's word is acerglin. I think Ricky just referenced one a moment ago. And acerglin is a mead made with maple syrup. Now the question is, how old is that term? From the 1890s or so, we have the term acer, A-C-E-R, which means, we think, a maple alcoholic beverage, possibly made with honey, possibly not. But what's weird about the word acerglin is it's a combination of Latin, acer, and glin, which is Welsh, which isn't a normal combination of, of words. So acerglin, it means a maple mead, whether that's what it always meant, is still up for dispute. Acerglin, our word of the week, and the end of our show. Keep sending your questions and I'll get to them as soon as possible. Cheers.